Cool, guys. So I, I think we are already uh, 11 minutes past our starting time. So I think that everyone who wanted to join is here. So welcome to our summer meeting. I hope that you're all doing well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sorry I missed the, the past demo meetings, and I will be missing the next two ones. Uh, I think Madeline is going to be taking them over, but yeah, I'm <laughs> glad to be back. Right. Um, so let me go through the previous action items. Um, uh, Madelina had, uh, she was going to look into the uh, updating the mid to team page, and she will do this this week since she was off uh, last week. Um, Kadir was to update us on a certain bug. He is not here. Um, let me see if we can see what that bug is about. That is the uh, add image feature for contributor forums. Uh, that seems to be falling to the next spring. So that's uh, the update that we got from Kadir. So um, that's still planned, but it just moves to the next spring. The next action item, help Vito get access to VPN reporting. Um, Kadir is not here, and I don't know if Vito is online, but um, I think that we will need to look into that uh, later. Uh, Roland, to update form threats, persona versus themes. Uh, does anyone know, because Roland isn't here today, um, if we could do that? Um, okay, we will have to. We will have to take a look at that. And now, uh, Ibai, uh, to report back on the new Elton and KPI. How does it look, Ibai? Uh, I dropped the ball here completely. So, I, my okay. fault. Okay, so I think that I'm going to copy all action items to next week so that we can make sure uh, to, to get them done or get at least an update yeah. from everyone. Okay? Nope. I will try to um, make it the first half of the this okay, week. Okay, perfect. I'm sorry. I just I just copied them all. Um, right. So yeah, maybe for the for the next time, if you're going on on, on vacation, on holiday, or anything, you can update the uh, the action items. But no problem. We have them for next week. You you will get uh, bugged again for them. <laughs> okay, moving forward to the Sumo development update. We don't have Kadir and we don't have Ricky. Uh, and there is nothing there, but we assume everything's going well, and um, you know we'll have our features uh, anytime soon. I'm really sorry. Does any one of you know anything more than you know than how it's going? Okay. So next time we'll have. I think Kadir is also off for two weeks, but um, yeah, we will get an update as soon as he's back. I forget. Which... Um, I assume. Yes, please. I think we're on the third sprint, and you can look at the sprint page and see what's been fixed and what's planned. I'll put the link in the... Okay, that, that's awesome, Michael. Here. Perfect. Perfect. So let me check that. So yeah, everyone, if you want to check what's... Uh, what's going on. You can see all the solo stories and the priorities. And it seems to be that there's a lot of things that are already resolved. Um, and you can take a look there and that's going to give you a good idea of what's going on. Thanks Michael for putting that. I think that you know from that list you can also see what's going on with the UX and uh, if you don't have any more uh, input on that we can go to Runtable. Perfect. Um, so um, there is there is a meeting at 3 p.m. today about Capture Mozilla. Who added that? Sorry, I'm going to look. I think that was SatDev. OK, OK. So SatDev was letting us know that there's this meeting about Capture Mozilla. Uh, if you want to join, uh, the, he posted the Etherpad to that a meeting. So you can uh, go there and see if that's something you'd like to go. Um, what is that? So we have. Sorry. sorry. What is the item before that about a brown bag? Is that this another set of thing? Is that the same thing or a different thing? Uh, let me see. Yeah, I think that he was. If you're interested in making a a, a brown bag, it seems to be the wiki page that you get to 
when you want to do a brown bag. So I think that those were items that were added by Sata. Sata is uh, unfortunately unable to join us right now. Uh, but I think that that's the, you know, he, he, he's always very active posting meetings that you can attend to. So I, I, I think that that's um, the, the type of meetings. Uh, he also posted uh, that the Thursday we have a question day and that next Tuesday is a mobile test day and that we need moderators to help uh, throughout the day. And there is an etherpad to that. Michelle, uh, would you like to uh, let us know a little bit more about that test day on Tuesday? Mm, yes, this is testing um, Sumo on a mobile device. So um, the UX team and Sumo Dev worked really hard all last quarter to um, land a whole new mobile optimized support.mozilla.org and we're still working out some kinks but it looks really good and we can test it and make sure we've had some impressions with things like scrolling and images and so we want to make sure that things that scrolling is great and images appear for all the articles and test also um, I think profiles edit profile landed last week and also, um, we have the ability to ask a question through the mobile optimized site and, and um, view the forum threads. So, um, and you can vote on them also through the mobile site. So testing any and all of those things, just go to support.mozilla.org on your mobile device. And, um, and then you can look at the etherpad for places to put your comments if you find anything that's amiss. Okay, so like Sitka, you have a new tablet, right? You can help with test on your mobile device. And everyone who has a phone can help Michelle on Tuesday. Yeah, so any, mo any Tuesday mobile phone. Test day, I like that name. Uh, that's good. <laughs> um, Rosanna, one thing, sorry. Um, I see that it's written here that Thursday is questions day, so that's sumo day. Just to make it clear, because they're okay. like one one Thursday is uh, sumo day, the other Thursday is uh, help article day. Okay. So a lot well, of people get confused. <laughs> yeah. So I'll put like sumo day there. So thanks, Madalena, for clarifying that. Nice. We have so many days. I like that. So you know mm -hmm. what 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 you're supposed to do every day of the week. <laughs> that's nice. Uh, Madalina, I think that uh, we, some people wanted an update uh, regarding the Firefox support. Do you have something new or uh, we're at the same? On Facebook. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, right. The Facebook thing. Um, okay. So I think we, we actually talked about this uh, before, Mike and I. So basically the situation with Facebook now is that uh, from time to time we're doing these um, kind of trying to answer questions um, in an hour or two, like immediately after something has been posted. Uh, we have uh, tried that and it worked pretty well. It was quite interesting. So if anybody wants to participate in that, please just let us know. Uh, we would be happy to organize it again and see how it works. So this is the status right now. Okay, that sounds good. Um, anyone else questions? Otherwise, we will go to Firefox desktop. Um, yeah. So desktop is pretty stable right now. Uh, 1802 has fixed most of the third party crashes that we had control over, um, specifically Facebook. And Norton has fixed their crashes with uh, the Norton toolbar. So we're all good from there and we're gearing up for Firefox 19. Uh, which should be exciting with pdf.js and a few other uh, fixes. So. Okay, nice. Sounds good. Um, we can go now to Firefox on Android, Michelle. Uh, yeah, since Roland's out today, I'll just say thanks to everyone uh, contributing to Firefox for Android documentation. We have a bunch of new people touching those articles, which is awesome. We're really glad to see um, everybody helping out with mobile and all the new names. Um, Yalam96, Aaron Rudin, uh, Richard Newman contributed this week. He's an old one, but I add him in. Um, support Jake H, I think is new. Alco 
and um, iNerd. Thank you all for your contributions to Firefox for Android. A bunch of you are helping with um, Firefox OS documentation also, which is amazing. And um, we have covered five of the 12 open Firefox OS topics that we set as a goal January 23rd. What's it? It's like only the 11th of February. So that's amazing. <laughs> and um, we started with a goal to get to 30 people editing the KB every day, and we're up to 40, which is amazing. I think this is efforts from the whole team. Um, Michael, Madalena, Rosanna, the tech writing program, I think is all having a huge impact. And um, we're seeing a lot of um, work going on on the KB. So thanks everyone for who's editing and reviewing knowledge-based articles. It's very helpful, really awesome. Yeah, uh, Michelle, I, I want to say something there. And, uh, you know, Michael's going to talk a little bit more about the tech writing program and the Firefox 20 release cycle later. Uh, but I also wanted to mention that the uh, KB community has been also very welcoming to our new contributors. John99 is they're helping, uh, uh, you know, people to set up uh, things. And I know that a bunch of other are helping the new ones. So thanks a lot for that. That's uh, helping us to bring more people on the KB. You can see that a little bit in the KPI that the that the KB is, is growing. So thanks to everyone helping there. And I'm sure Michael will update us a little bit more on how he's doing the technical writing uh, uh, program now for the Firefox release 20. That's further down the, the list, but yeah, thanks. Um, and with that, we move to Firefox OS. Uh, Michelle, do you have something there? Oh, I did them both. Yeah, you just did. That yeah, right. Firefox Sorry. OS updates you. <laughs> right, perfect. Uh, so yeah, we have that, and that is wonderful. I see that Thunderbird is empty. I guess Roland uh, is out, but uh, for everyone contributing there also, big thanks. Um, that's good. Now, uh, if we can move to metrics. Anyone, anything related to mobile? Uh, otherwise, we'll move now to metrics. So usually it is Kadir who walks us through the um, KPI dashboard, if you can uh, click on it. Um, yeah, it looks pretty much uh, stable. Uh, the only thing that I, you know, that I wanted to mention is that the, the, the KB uh, contributions have grown. That's uh, really cool. Anyone else uh, has any comments on the metrics? It seems that our solved rate's been dropping for the last couple of weeks. Do we have any idea why? Yeah, it looks like it's trending downwards ever so slightly. I see also the same trend for the number of helpful votes in the forum. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's somehow related to the amount of answers. Uh, it's kind of there's this slight correlation. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the number of questions, they have increased significantly yeah. in January after we shipped Firefox 18. So that's it's yeah. probably related to that. Uh, and in that yeah. context, actually, we're doing fine because we're 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 solving. In absolute terms, we're probably solving even more questions than we normally yeah. do. But but percentage-wise, it, it's going down significantly, or not, or slightly, I should say. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was going to. No, that the absolute uh, uh, numbers would be also confused. Yeah. So here's this, this is a thing that confused me last week. I forget who who uh, explained this to me. Probably Ebay, but um, uh, or Kadir. <clears throat> So in the first, the questions part of the KPI dashboard, the two, the two lines that are green and red, those are percentages. Yeah. But the blue one, which is filled, it's absolute. So that's the one where you need to look on the right side of the scale. You see the 50, 100, 150. That's the number of uh, questions in absolute terms. Whereas the red and the, the green are percentages of those that are marked as either uh, solved or that are responded to within 72 hours. So if the red one was actually also an absolute, you would see an increase in the number of resolved threads. But percentage-wise, right. compared to this increased size or number of, of threads, is going down slightly. Uh, Tyler. 
Yeah, but like, for example, because um, I see back in the beginning of January, uh, we had like around seven to 800 questions a week. And so it dropped down to 26, 23, and 23 again uh, percent solved. Uh, but then at the end of January, we dropped back down to 647, and we dropped to 19 percent solved. And we've been trending down from there, even though the number of questions is going down as well. Um, and that's the same with the uh, number of answers. So I'm wondering, did we have like a change in the community? Did someone not, is someone not answering as many questions as they used to or something like that? That's what I'm, I'm curious about. Because even though the number of questions is going down, the solved rate's going down even faster. Um, well, I'm not sure if I'm seeing the same things because if I start, I mean, the, the, the first indication of a downward trend in the sold rate that I can see if I, if I switch to weekly view, because I think yeah. the daily view is just too noisy. If I switch to weekly views, the first week that you start to see a downward trend is January 14th, uh, where it goes down from 26 to 23, basically, or 24. Um, so it's barely even something that, you, I mean, it's, it's probably not even statistically significant. And then the next week is 23.4. And so it's not until really the week of January 28th that you start to see um, what I would guess is a significant decrease. That's the, when you're down to 19.2. Yep. It could be fatigue because we've now had a full month of twice as many questions. Well, not really twice as many, but but at least a 50% increase in number of questions in the last few weeks. So it could, I, but but at this point, I'm I'm only guessing, but yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't make the conclusion that we're that it's a very long downward trend. So I would say that it's a downward trend in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, maybe okay. maybe some other things about that. If you look at helpful votes, so the helpful votes, even where we hit that that low at the end of January, beginning of February, the helpful votes actually start going back up, and part of the things could be that these are problems that there weren't solutions to. Like, it's a lot of, like, acknowledging, yes, that's crashes Firefox. Right. So it, the crashes you in, are in correct. Firefox 18. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, so, so I think the conclusion is we should keep an eye on this. I mean, uh, ideally, if we have any other indications, if, you, if any, any of you know any other trends or indications, right. then we should take a look at that. But, but I say long term or, or in the next couple of weeks, let's, let's monitor this uh, because now we shipped Firefox 18. 0 0.2, which fixed a lot of the problems that we saw. So presumably the number of questions will go down and the number of uh, qualitative, quality, quality <laughs> responses will go up. Okay. So English. That, can can right. I add something? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I think that the, the whole solution thing, I, it, Tyler hits the, find what he mentioned is pretty, pretty relevant that it seems that in June we hit uh, the, the highest level of solutions, and and then from there we start going down, 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 down until October, where we we kind of stabilize for the rest of the year. Uh, I think that in the change in June, the change in trends could be related to the redesign. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but that's a hypothesis, and um, and then. I think that from from there, the other big change is the one in June, and that could be related to Firefox 18. Basically, the solutions that we're giving are not good enough because basically the Firefox is crashing. Uh, so yeah, again, let's keep an eye on it. Let's see if we, with the latest uh, change, we, we recover that. But I think that one of the trends, the downtrend is, is the redesign and the, the less visibility of the solution button, even though we always assume that the majority of people were coming from the email. Mm. Uh, this is my solution. So we've been doing some changes on the way that solutions are selected. I think that that could be part of the problem. Remember that in the past, we used to have a lot of abuse too, abuse in the sense of people marking solutions, things that were not. Is there any way we can validate the, this theory that you have? Uh, the redesign one. I'm gonna. I'm taking this action item to see what what really happened in June. Okay. I mean, if you scale up, if you view the full year and you switch to monthly view, there there is definitely a peak around June. 
It's not a super significant peak, though. I, I, I don't know if, like, if you, if you omit the June re results, like, if you just look at August and May, it's kind of a, it's a slight, slight, slight arch. Well, we're going um, up, and then, yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to, yeah, it's, it's a bit hard to tell if it's something that can be pointed to a specific uh, point of event. But if you can take that as an action item and look, look at it, see what you can find, I think that would be helpful. I want to try to see what yeah what what happened between the months of May and September. I think that it's when we use right. Yep. Yeah, yeah because that if, sounds... if you look at the number of questions we have in June, it it's not as high of a spike as we had in January, but our solution rate remained the same or higher than it was in May. Yeah. So I, I'm not I'm not quite sure that the amount of questions is going to drive our solution rate down like it did in January because we did have solution we did have workarounds for a lot of the issues that we were seeing um, so I'm not I'm not quite convinced that that's why it went down so. another thing to keep in mind is that as the more I look at this the more I realize that the number of questions in June was at an all-time low so basically the number of questions people had to deal with was very very low in that particular month and then it goes up again so that could also be related, that because it seems like the more questions we have in the forum, the the the, the quality drops ever so slightly of the right. responses. So it could also be related. Okay, Maybe that so... was a particularly positive release of Firefox <laughs> that happened just in June. It was right. the it was the flash thing which we had yeah. answers for. So oh, that is, okay. that is what turned things around, right? That is when we got a lot of questions, was in June 30th or something like that. But but the peak that you see in the number of uh, solved threads is, is in the beginning of June, it looks like. Hmm. So you have to zoom out on this scale and you switch it daily, then you start to see it in more granularity. And, and at least, you know, anyway, I mean, it's a good thing that you're, you're investing in this, but I can see a, a number of potential reasons for it, a combination of reasons, such as so uh, the quality of the release and the number of questions in the in the threads right so I think Eva you're taking this I added it to yeah. the action items uh, with your name so maybe you can take a closer look, look to this and then we won't yeah. know. Sorry, we won't yeah know one of the, yeah one of the things that I asked Kadir was to have a, a calendar but I guess that this is something that we can put all together uh, a calendar of events that will allow us to do this type of analysis way easier okay that sounds that sounds good uh, so we'll see maybe next week or in two weeks we'll have some more insights on what's going on there and you know maybe what what happens so um, if there's a, if there are any comments on this we can move forward to the community update um, and I want to start uh, with Elton and you know localization and uh, tell a little bit about what we did in Brazil so um, uh, two weeks ago uh, Ralph uh, Mauricio and I joined the call and um, it was really nice to get to meet Mauricio personally, the local leader. So um, Ralph and I, we were in Brazil and uh, during campus party we met a lot of people and uh, we, we managed to engage uh, Yolanda um, as a localizer and she just went in and translated the Army of Awesome replied like on the spot. So that was awesome at the campus party. Uh, then we had this uh, sumo event uh, on Saturday. We did it at a hackerspace that is super beautiful, and uh, you know the people from the Garoa hackerspace were wonderful, and you know they let us uh, be there. Um, so we had around 15, you know, 40 people who joined us, and uh, it was a very friendly event. We talked about you know what everyone was doing. We talked about Mozilla in general. We talked about sumo. Uh, big thanks to Clauber and Nessa from the Brazilian uh, Mozilla community because they were there. Nessa helped us a lot with the hackerspace, and Clauber, uh, uh, you know, made a great uh, uh, presentation about Mozilla. Um, it was all very informal and super friendly. And then Mauricio joined us uh, via uh, Skype, and he actually uh, talked to everyone about how it is to work for Sumo. And so it was it was really nice because his face was you know like uh, uh, projected on the wall, and everyone was seeing him and. You know, he got the chance to meet the people that were there. Um, so out of 14 people, we have at least five people who are now actively translating articles and are very interested in uh, uh, helping Sumo. So that's wonderful. Um, it was great having that event, and we got a lot of energy. So uh, we look forward to having these events, maybe locally organized by reps, or if we get to travel some more, then we will do them. Uh, but we will try to make them uh, happen. Uh, 
What's on the pipeline for Brazil is that Maurizio wants to make a Moss coffee uh, where he will make a localization sprint. So he's now talking to the reps. Uh, so maybe we'll have another Brazilian event soon and uh, the localizers can you know, get together and we can get the Brazilian locale up to speed, uh, which is something that's uh, really awesome. Um, I can only, you know, like tell every local leader then, you know, just get the help from a rep, organize a little event and get some energy into your community. Uh, it's really refreshing. It's cool to meet new people. Uh, also, we have a lot of girls, uh, which I think is awesome to have some new girls uh, joining the Brazilian community. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to do this uh, little update so that everyone knows. And for anyone of you watching us right now, uh, if you are a local leader, if you're a rep, and you would like to make a localization sprint uh, for Sumo, uh, talk to me. I can help you find resources. I can help you uh, talk to a rep or find a rep in your uh, in your region, and I can help you set up the event. I have a lot of uh, best practices. It's actually really easy because the only thing is to you know get together and uh, you know talk to each other, and it's 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 awesome. So don't hesitate to come back to me and ask me. I'm more than glad to help you with anything. And I have my contacts with the rep, so I can I can help you there too. And and t say something to us in Brazilian Portuguese. I know you learned Portuguese while you were there for a week, <laughs> Rosana. Eu falei todo o tempo português. Ah, vai mais um portunhol. So I, I don't I, I I think that my Portuguese uh, qualifies more. But... Uh, as, as Portuñol, which is, you know, the mix of, uh, you know, Spanish and Portuguese. But yeah, I actually, uh, Ralph went out to buy some pizza. It was very hard to get pizza in Sao Paulo before 7 p.m. Uh, so if you're in Sao Paulo and you want to eat pizza before 7 p.m., don't, you know, go for something different. Uh, <laughs> and I, I actually explained the first part of the localization tools in my uh, Portuñol, uh, which was kind of fun. And uh, uh, But, you know, I think that you know, as we see that uh, people are actually making edits now, they kind of understood. And then Ralph went, uh, came back and he went through a very funny article that he created. Um, that, that was also cool. He created a funny article, you know, for this event. So they were like all learning how to translate with a super funny article. Um, so yeah, it's called really How to Campus Party. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, do you have the link, Michelle? Uh, we could yeah, I can put here. the link. Actually, I don't think it's approved, but I can approve it and put the link. <laughs> Just don't mark it ready for localization. Oh, no. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, that, that that's the thing. So that the you know the the what we take from this is you know like uh, it's really awesome to get together with people. It would build you as a local leader or, or as a localizer a lot of energy, but you can also feel the energy coming from other people, and um, you know it's a great way to get more people to help you do the work and you know, scale better. So. Um, as I told you, please let us know and uh, we'll help you do these events wherever you are uh, all around the world. Okay, that, that was a bit long, but you know, we had this event and it was quite cool, so I, I just wanted to let you all know. Um, anyway, any questions? Otherwise, I would hand it over to Michael who wants to talk about the CD. I was going to ask you, I'm sure there is like a Flickr tag or a something so people can see pictures of this is there at least for the uh, campus party there should be right I, yeah I, I guess for the campus party you should definitely have like campus party Brazil or something uh, but that's a good action item let me write that down uh, so we can get you some pictures I also have pictures I just didn't have the time yet to up, uh, upload the, to upload them the Disgaro hackerspace is so beautiful I wanted to stay there and live there forever. Yeah. I mean it was I saw some pictures it was it was uh, I didn't realize at first that the the larger event, the campus party thing that this was all connected to was like 8,000 people or something. Oh yeah, it's, I, I actually number. have a, panor a panoramic view, you know, on, you know, it's like in the middle and you have like thousands and thousands of, you know, uh, tents for people are just camping there and then the, the event. Wow. But that, that's a good point, Michael. Uh, I, I'll actually, I, I'll add it as an action item so that we get uh, the community some nice juicy photos <laughs> that we were doing. <laughs> So there's the video too. I'll link the video too. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. And if you want to see the, uh, the, the article uh, that Ralph created, it, it was kind of like, it was funny and we had a lot of fun, you know, and the pizza is also there. So yeah, it was definitely 
know, it's definitely a good way of having fun with our country with this, which is also great. So Michael, I think that you are the only one with questions. Um, so I think that we can go on to the KB. Let us know a little bit more about the, you know, what you're working on. So yeah, the tech writing group is kicking butt. Um, there's, um, so we kind of have like two groups and, and just to kind of back up a little bit and explain. So the, the idea is to reach out to people who are interested in technical writing and kind of go through how we figure out what in the world to write on Sumo and where we get all that information and how our wiki works and, and all of that. And so we started a little late with the Firefox like 19 group. And so, and they're, they're still working on some Firefox 19 updates, but they're getting pretty darn close to done. Um, and there's a second group. There's a little overlap between the groups though, in terms of like people, but there's a second group that's now researching what's going into Firefox 20 so that we can make those updates. Uh, hopefully then the goal is to get them done in time, right, for local to go for localization. So uh, those articles will, will be all ready by the time Firefox 20 uh, comes out. Um, and the other, I mean, the other part about it is that, um, I, you know, I've been like learning from mistakes or things that I've forgotten the first time, like, hey, we should all um, introduce ourselves. We know who else is doing this with us. So I did that this time. You can look in the in the um, knowledge base forum and see who's who's working on this for Firefox 20, for instance, which is pretty cool. There's people from all over. Um, yeah, so that's it. I mean, basically, you'll just see more. It's good that we get to then document how, how things happen. And um, uh, and Chang had a really good idea over email about um, updating versus writing. And so um, one of the things that we were kind of doing for the first group that I'm making sure that we for sure do in the second group is is going through up, updating things because that's most of the work is like keeping things up to date as things change every six darn weeks, right? And then there's the other part about um, um, there's all kinds of articles that we would like to write um, or things that could use documentation that don't have documentation and where you have to research a whole topic from beginning to end and, and write the whole article. So, um, um, well, um, so Adam, for instance, was has been doing that in the Firefox 19 group, and I'll make sure that we continue to do that with the next group too. So anyway, it's I'm really excited about it. It's a it's a pretty cool group of people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool, and yeah, I just want to say like it's amazing to see how people are starting to jump in so quickly, and you know, other others are you know helping them and. Yeah, I'm also very, very happy to see that that's going very yeah. well. And, you know, it's 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 the first part of our of our program, as you said, Michael. We're testing things, um, and but, you know, it will get better soon. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm really sorry. I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, the body program um, mm. later, but I'm not going to, um, yeah, I'm not going to go over anyone's uh, time. Uh, um, Michael, do you have anything else for the KB? That's the big thing for now. Cool, cool. Uh, so yeah, I don't wanna. I'm not gonna go before you, Madalena. Um, do you want to talk about Sumo Day Thursday? Yes. Yeah, so we have another Sumo Day this Thursday. Yay! Uh, last time we had 91% uh, of questions answered, uh, which is great considering the questions are going higher and higher. There are more questions every day. Uh, so thanks everybody. Keep up the good work. Uh, keep up the good work. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you on Thursday, so we can answer more and more questions as they come in, and hopefully reach again the 100% that we are all looking for. So thank you, and see you Thursday. And increase in the sol rate. Come and on. increase the sol rate. Yeah. Can't wait. And yeah. and there's no penalty for starting the, a few days before too. If you want to go ahead and just jump right in and do that. Yeah, right. that's, that's cool. Okay, so <laughs> see you guys on Thursday for Sumo Day. That's wonderful. So uh, just uh, Satsap just being me, he wanted to say uh, that uh, he's very he wants to thank uh, Adam.
for his work on the KB because uh, Adam has done a lot of great job at work. So Adam, again, from all of us, and especially from Satya, uh, thanks a lot for your amazing work. You started, your, you were our very first participant in the technical writing program, and you've been kicking butt at Michael Fest. And uh, thanks a lot. You're helping us a lot. And yeah, we, we love to have you here. And as you see, everyone's very, very happy to have you around. Um, the next point, do you have any comments on that? Any questions? Because otherwise I will move to the supervisor program. Okay, moving on. So the buddy program, um, uh, we have this thread on the support forum. I can actually um, add a link to it so that you can uh, take a look at all the conversations that we've been having. Uh, it's actually going very, very well. We had uh, our last meeting um, last week on Friday and um, we have um, a couple of uh, contributors uh, that have shown a lot of uh, initiative and uh, are going to be leading the next round. So first we took a look at what we need to get organized in order to have a, a body program and uh, it was great. We created forms, uh, we created uh, you know, spreadsheets to track things and we created a structure so that we can assign bodies to uh, new newbies as we call the new contributors. Uh, and uh, we have this form so that we can um, assign them a body that's actually in their time zone and, you know, probably maybe, if, you know, they speak the same language, then they can do so. So that was the first time, uh, first part of the, of the body program. That is more or less uh, finished. The second round is to actually take a look at all the documents that we have right now on Sumo to onboard contributors. Uh, how we teach them the, you know, the localization tools, the KB tools, uh, Army of Awesome, the support forum, everything that we have there to onboard new contributors. Um, we're going to assess those documents um, with the community. And we have Jay, Andrew, and uh, Yusuf, uh, with, uh, yeah, his username is, is Yalam. They're going to be leading the three subgroups. So uh, they're going to look, each one of them is going to lead a, a group that's going to focus on one of the specific uh, areas in Sumo. So they have two weeks from now on to take a look at all the documents, um, assess them, um, and make recommendations. And we will meet again on March 1st um, to talk about the, the work that they've done uh, and to plan the next steps uh, on what we're going to do with those documents. So that's the state of the, of the body program going very well. Next two weeks are uh, working time for the subgroups. So if you want to join them, anyone, just uh, contact the leads. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they're, they have been uh, very active, uh, active since the beginning and uh, everyone's welcome to join. And if you have um, ideas, suggestions, you know, feel free to jump in and help them. There is an etherpad for each area. So you, if, you, if you don't have the time to talk to them, you can also add your uh, uh, feedback there. And all the information, including all the RC logs for all the meetings uh, are on the, the etherpad and on that uh, forum thread. So you should have all the information you need there. So uh, that's from the body program. Any, any questions on that? That's really cool. I like the buddy program. I think it's great to have people looking always at the contributor documentation. I mean, we're updating so many things in the KB for the products and for users, but um, it's great to have people assessing the contributor docs. That's awesome. Yeah, and we even have someone, I think that Jay and Tim, who is a contributor from Australia, uh, they're very eager to make videos too. So Michael, maybe they they can help cool. you uh, with those videos. And we're talking about you know maybe universal subtitles or popcorn something like that, so that you know we have very easily localizable uh, um, videos. So yeah, that's that's the way things are, are moving forward. And yeah, I'm very happy to see uh, that we make so much progress. And you know, the the guys from the buddy program, you know, you you buddies are doing a great job. Now we have also a buddy group. So if you want to join the buddy group and you're interested, just come to me and I'll add you there. So that's it for the body program. Um, I don't see any more items. Anyone else has something uh, here? Otherwise, I will move to decisions and action items. Oh, I think we're good. So pretty much the first action items are the ones that were for this week, um, but we didn't have an update, so we'll move them to next week. Um, and uh, the new action items are, um, that EBI takes a look into the forum KPI and see uh, what uh, the impact of the redesign was. 
um, and you know what's going on with our solve rate. Yeah. Um, and for Ralph and for me, the action item is actually to uh, share more photos and more information uh, on Campus Party um, so that you guys can take a look at it. Anyone, anything else I'm missing? Uh, David, please. For everyone to go into the forum and answer 10 questions this week. Okay. Questions, questions, questions. Questions. And solutions. And uh, yeah, with a solutions. Please, the <laughs> with a solution. And to clarify, because I see Satav asking also, there's a, a, a SUMA meeting next Monday. Does the US employees have a holiday? So there'll be less people in the meeting. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, so one action item is uh, maybe I'm not going to be around, but can someone take on and just pin people who are on? I mean, Kadir's not going to be able to be there, but uh, for the ones of you in the US who are going to be on PTO next week, maybe that you can either, you know, update your um, your to do item, but you know, so that we know what happened with that. Um, so before next meeting, next uh, community meeting, make sure if you're on PTO next week, make sure that you update your and get yeah. your stuff done, basically. Right. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to add that. Okay. I think that would be it. Anyone else? Any questions? Any jokes at the end of the program? I don't know. <laughs> this is not a joke. It's actually the truth, but I wish everyone a great week. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it sounds okay. like a joke. <laughs> We should, maybe we should implement it, like the, the joke of the end of the SMO meeting, so everyone gets to prepare a joke every uh, Yeah, I'd have to prepare, but that's we fine. We should have David like have a uh, Swedish saying at the end of each meeting. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. We, we talked okay. about that before. This is, gives me deja vu. Anyway, thank okay, you. Okay, cool. Thanks, thanks everyone, for joining. And yeah, see you. Bye. 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 Thanks, Bye. Rosanna.